explosion. Welcome to another edition of Staffing Sharks Review It. I'm here with my buddy, man. Matt's in the house from Higher Logic. What's up, my man? And I got to get a, 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 a great white cage just to go in Ooh. that intro. That is a wetsuit, a snorkel, all of it. Um, you got no, it, bro. Richard, happy to be here, man. Happy to be on, on the shark and uh, try to make sure that I can I can live up to that that deep dive intro there. Um, well, that but, intro uh, was for you, brother, man, to build up the, uh, you know, all the pump that we're going to have today, man, to talk about AI. You know, it's uh, it's the big thing in the uh, in the industry. But uh, tell you what, Matt, you know, I've known you for a while now, man. I got to hang out with you. Got a crazy picture at Staffing World. So uh, everybody out there knows who you are. But just a little introduction, man, of what you're doing these days. Yeah, no. For everybody that missed the uh, the NASCAR photo between you and I at Staffing yeah. World there, um, uh, th 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 things have been going well. Um, uh, on my end, just kind of quick two-second background. Totally fell into staffing, uh, had gotten into sales, fell into staffing, was over at a company called Madison Resources. Then I went over into the agency world, worked there for a little while um, at a company called GTT. Um, from there, was over at Text Us, part of the, the bullhorn um, neck of the woods. And then nice. over uh, over from there, over to, to Hire Easy, got a name brand. And from there, Tracker and now Hire Logic. So definitely made... Um, some different, uh, some moves within the staffing ecosystem, worked for agencies, sold mm -hmm. for agencies, seen all the different sides and, uh, and candidly, like you see in the little name down there, I, I, I nerd out on this. Um, I, I live for it. I don't know what that says about me, but I'm happy to, uh, to really look at it from all different sides, um, whether you're an agency owner or somebody that partners with them or, or, or sells to them, or, uh, even on the candidate side, it, it's really cool. Dude, you know what I love, brother, man? You've been with different organizations. It's like football, like a football player. You know what I mean? You know, before your career is done, you're with 10 different companies, but you're getting a well, you know, diverse, you know, education from all of them, man. You see a lot of different sides. You see a lot of different lights. You understand things from new perspectives, which I think makes things a, a lot easier um, when you're really talking to people. And it, it's just more of an educational, consultative uh, scene to it, being able to see what happens mm -hmm. behind the scenes rather than just on that first paper that's being signed. So yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's cool. And I got to tell you, brother, sometimes I ain't gonna lie. There's sometimes that you go to these companies, you're like, man, this is stuff I'm not ever going to do again. It teaches you some of the wrong ways to do stuff too. And you're like, never again, man. <laughs> <laughs> you learn, you see the, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything in between. But uh, unfortunately for our industry, I think there's a lot more good than bad and uh, a lot of good decisions to be made as long as people are making them. Got you, my man. So like we talked about AI, I mean, that word AI is everywhere. So in higher logic, you know, you're powered by AI. So let's just jump into this a little bit right now and talk about like higher logic, what you guys are doing for the hiring. Yeah. Yeah. So AI, like you mentioned, a uh, big word, uh, sounds a lot of very scary to a lot of people and, uh, it, and candidly, it just doesn't need to be, um, for mm -hmm. us over, over at higher logic, we're definitely incorporating AI into what it is that we do whether it's on the machine learning side, the natural language processing side. Again, those are some other big words a lot of people hear about. Um, but what it truly comes down to is just simply using conversational AI. We're taking what once was um, really, you know, agnostic to any sort of, uh, you know, basic process and we're digitizing it. We're taking what's what once analog and we're digitizing it. So uh, th there's a laundry list of things that we do over here at Higher Logic. Uh, more than anything at a high level and, and happy to kind of touch on some key points, but we are allowing recruiters to to do what they do best and engage with candidates. We're increasing productivity. We're making sure that things aren't being missed out on. And along the way, we're really just trying to make sure that, you know, data can be captured in ways that otherwise just simply wouldn't be able to. Um, so along really that road is where higher logic lives, just using conversational AI. And what's great is, it's not as a big implementation. I've worked for softwares before where there's the lift, there's the training, there's That's the- That's why I got silver in my email. hair, Matt. You get gray hair over that stuff, man. <laughs> yep, and people hear AI and they think it's a, it's quite the undertaking, but mm -hmm. uh, luckily for us at Higher Logic, it, it really isn't. And that's how we've been able to uh, make waves just in the short while that we've been around. Again, startup world for us, uh, been around for about two and a half, coming up on three years. Nice. And, uh, did not sell anything for the first year and a half. It was all R and D, and then since then we've been able to pick up about twelve hundred accounts. So excited yeah. about it! Want to keep the ball rolling, um, and uh, working with some some larger names, integrated partners, and and everybody along the way. Yeah. So let's talk about that integration with ATS systems. 
name some of the companies you're out there. So if there's any viewers out there that's working with these companies, you know, definitely can tap into you guys. Yeah. So uh, one of the larger ones that we had done a case study with um, a company called Dexian. They're the, the H largest uh, IT U.S. staffing agency. Okay. Um, we integrate with we integrate with Bullhorn uh, with them. So Bullhorn's going to be big. Mm -hmm. We now have an integration with Crelate. Um, and nice. then you're also talking about some other pieces that are uh, kind of split up over on the TA, the, the corporate uh, HR neck of the woods, Workday, Workable, Greenhouse, okay. Bamboo HR, Jazz HR. So really the whole spectrum there. And uh, to dive into it also, you think about a couple other name brands like Zoom Phones, Ring yeah. Central. So being able to make sure that we can really just you know, utilize the ecosystem at hand that a lot of these agencies and, and you know, recruitment firms are using. Uh, whether it's on the staffing side or if it's on the, the you know, the corporate um, recruiting mm -hmm. side of that, that neck of the woods, um, there is there's tech for all of it. And a lot of those workflows are, are going to be similar and or the same in some cases. And we just want to make sure that everybody knows what's out there and is making the most of it. Great stuff. OK, so now we're going to talk about AI. It's not going to replace the recruiter, Matt. So can you tell everybody out there because you're you know what? I'm going to call you. You're the ultimate tech nerd. So, you know, like Weezer, right? <laughs> Love the name. But. <laughs> Tell us, like, seriously, on my side, I keep telling recruiters, AI is not going to replace you unless you're not, you know, taking AI in. I mean, seriously, then that day you got to embrace AI. You, you got to change. What's, what do you take on your side? Because you're on the tech side. Yeah. So, I mean, really, with that, AI is not going to replace recruiters. Uh, mm -hmm. It, it wow. simply is not. What What's going to happen is, and people say you hear adapt or die. And, and that's, a, that's a, t a harsh way, I think, of looking at it. But really what it comes down to more than anything is if people are not implementing AI, then they are going to be losing to the teams that are implementing AI. And AI, again, broad term, a lot of different ways to go with it. But ultimately what it's trying to do is increase productivity more than anything else and allow recruiters, allow people to sit within those workflows or, or maybe slightly improved workflows to be able to just harness more data, get more done in a shorter amount of time. Exactly. Um, improves, you know, mistakes, get rid, uh, gets rid of different administrative errors and extra steps that are more redundancies to get people back in the saddle. If you can get a recruiter back in the saddle, back to making those calls, finding those candidates, you know, really making sure that they're getting those submittals in the door, that's the focus rather mm -hmm. than tedious work in between. So that's that AI isn't going to replace recruiters. Um, but uh, recruiters with AI will replace recruiters that are not using AI. That's well, really I always I think say, the, the way you, we got it. You summed it up, man. You know what? You have AI on one side. I call AI a different way. It's actual interaction. That's after you use the other part of AI, the other part of AI is going to kick in. I mean, the human connection is going to be there. And I tell you what, this day and age in staffing in 2024 is going to be so exciting, Matt. You know, man. I mean, this, this AI stuff is coming at us. There's going to be more stuff. A couple of years ago, it was the tech stack. Now it's this, it's that. But it's like, it's going to make our job so easy, man. I mean, at the end of the day, seriously, it's like we're in a spaceship, you know, and we're just like coming at it different ways. And it's like, uh, it's exciting for the recruiter because you can have so many different avenues, like your solution and other ones, that's going to make your life so easy when you go in the office every day or if you're at home. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's a lot of AI out there that people don't know about. Um, and I know from conferences that I've gone to at Staffing World, HR tech. There's other ones out there for all all next of it. You you made you know different talks at at, at quite a few even uh, more recently since then. Uh, it, it's everywhere. Um, AI is a is, are, is a term that people are popping up left and right. Some people are using it candidly and I'd say more inappropriate ways or daunting ways or confusing and gray space mm -hmm. ways. Um, but it's not going away. And this is something that if agencies aren't utilizing, they will be coming in second or third place to their competitors. Uh, and we're just trying to make sure that, you know, people aren't scared of it. People can harness it. There's different ways to do so. And yeah. it doesn't need to change the way that your company thinks. It needs to change the way that your company approaches things um, and really capitalizes on what they're doing on the daily more than anything else. Gotcha. So let's jump into this because I had a couple of bullet points I posted on LinkedIn. Less note taking. So, you know, I'm one of them kind of people. I used to have stickies over my office all the play everywhere. So, I yep. mean. Explain this so the recruiters can know that we're going to break this down for you all today. Yeah. So on our end, as far as like really on the higher logic side, less note taking, more engagement. What that means is we're really allowing the recruiter to make sure that when they're interacting with a candidate, they're having that 
that first, you know, firsthand interaction, that back and forth. We're not trying to change that workflow. Mm-hmm. HireLogic isn't trying to change the person to person connection. We're trying to make sure that everything from that connection that is applicable to an interview, to a screen, um, HireLogic isn't just a note taking or, you know, recording platform. We're not actually recording any audio or video. We're actually just taking a transcript and we're making sure that everything that is applicable is pulled out. Um, our logic is going to make sure that we're cutting through any of the noise. We're allowing the recruiter to interact with that candidate without seeing just the head up of every now and then of, oh, what they say again, what they say again, taking those not notes down. Um, I know when I worked at an agency, you would oftentimes see recruiters that would hand you over the back of a paper resume oh. with a couple of things jotted down, the, the five plus years Java master's. New York hybrid or something like that, mm-hmm. they, you know, six or seven bullets. And you realize that that's all stemmed from a 25 minute conversation. Um, we are trying to make sure that it's no longer five or six bullets, that everything is captured and not just captured, but everything ideally is pushed back into that ATS. Um, really trying to make sure that there's nothing lost along the way and allowing the recruiter to interact more while they're capturing more data. So that's really that, that piece as far as, the, the less note taking, the more engagement because that note taking is going to be happening anyway. And that's going to improve the engagement between a recruiter and a candidate. Dude, you guys just hit that. And note taking is so important. You know how many times I've been on the phone and there's another recruiter talking to me at the same time and you're forgetting or, or, or your, your phone's going off and you're missing all the notes and everything like that. You're just scribbling stuff down and then you lose the resume somewhere else. It's like in a pile of other crap you got. So this is going to solve all that, man. Yeah, we, we, we found about that 40% of all interview notes are actually put back into an ATS. Um, and that means 60% of notes that uh, recruiters are taking, if any, uh, during an interview are not ending up back into an ATS, mm-hmm. which for most you know business owners, uh, operations folks, anybody in leadership, uh, typically if it doesn't happen in the ATS, it never happened. It's really hard to be able to discover what happened on those interviews if there's not any true history or, or note taking in there. So we just want to make the most of, of what's actually happening with the boots on the ground. Exactly. And the next one I love is faster time to hire because you know what? Speed is everything. You know, you want you want the, the right candidate, you want accuracy, but at the end of the day, candidates don't have time to wait three weeks, four weeks. I mean, they need money now, you know? So tell us a little bit about yeah. that, how robust your system is for that. Yeah. So with that, as far as really just making sure that you're getting faster, um, faster hires along the way, what we're going to be able to do is just make sure that, you know, each interview from each interview, the way we look at it is we can save people 25 to 30 minutes, um, which mm-hmm. means for uh, that recruiter that they're getting things over to the hiring manager that much faster, whether that's an account manager internally at an agency that then has to flip it over to their contact or if that hiring manager is somebody internal at a corporate HR shop or, or, or whatever it might be, but we're making sure that we're saving 25 to 30 minutes per interview. So if you're thinking of maybe two interviews a day, four interviews a day, that could be 10 hours a week where those recruiters could be getting back to those candidates, where they could be finding the appropriate people to really hire for that job. Um, it, it's really a productivity thing more than anything else, as far as making sure that you can actually get faster hires um, because otherwise that's just more back and forth. That's 10 hours. Otherwise that maybe that candidate could have got back to, or mm-hmm. could have uh, been back to, you know, that recruiter could have actually gotten more, more items on their bucket list. So uh, yeah, we're really just trying to speed up the process along the way as a, as a byproduct of, of how powerful higher logic can be. Hell yeah. And 40 hours working. Hell if I, if, if I use this, maybe 20 hours, I'll have to work a week, right? <laughs> Knock it all out. Hey. And there's work. Oh, like a win's a win. A win's a win. Got to call him, Richard. <laughs> I got it, man. So, okay. So one thing that I got to touch on right now is that support. I hear this all the time from companies and technology, and we know there's good ones out there and there's ones that, you know, you get a ticket all the time. Tell everybody a little bit about the support and what you bring to the table. You know, I know you as a friend, but you know, people that might not know you yet, dude, Matt's a legit dude, man. He's gonna be with you the whole way, man. Right? Yeah. So really the idea here along the way is, I mean, we're always going to have the ability, like you mentioned, like people can put in tickets and that's great. But where we're at, especially what's nice is as we're scaling, as we're growing, um, people are going to be able to deal with real humans, uh, the, the, yeah. the me's of the world, the, uh, you know, myself, truly, not just the me's of the world, be able to deal with myself as well as my my colleagues that I can think of, Jen, Rich, Jim, others, Vivek, we're, 
we're able to really make sure that we're bringing things to the table and answering questions and solving problems right then and there. If it can help one person, it can help a uh, hundred people. It can help a, a, a thousand customers that we're trying to you know, make sure that we can bring on in the future. So we wanna make sure that everybody's enabled to really do their best, get the most out of it. And uh, customer support is not something to be forgotten about. I mean, I don't wanna name names or you know anything like that, but we've all seen um, Come those, on, Matt, those go ahead, man. Shops. You're risky. Name a name. I'm just messing with you, man. Plead the fifth. Plead <laughs> the fifth. Plead the fifth. But um, those companies where you know tickets come in and, and, and tickets are great and all, and, and they yeah. um, they get put in the in the tickler and they uh, you know get processed through and maybe they'll get to you by Q3, Q4. Um, for us, we're looking to get back to you really you know at least something back you know that day, the next day, and make sure that we're hopping on the phone with you and getting things sorted out um, as soon as possible. Really, more of what works with your calendar because we'll make it work, especially for people that, you know, are true customers are, you know, brought on enterprise accounts, anything like that. If you're bringing a team on with us, we want your team to be supported. Um, we're not trying to let you just, you know, fend for yourself and, and leave you just the wolves. So it, it's definitely something that higher logic takes seriously. hundred percent, man. And me being on the staffing recruiting side, I tell you what, the worst thing is when you get a ticket and they don't respond back or, or, you know, if you get a, a sales rep and they're, they're gone, they leave and they quit and there's a new one coming in and they have to already go through the whole thing now. Because once again, there's no notes taken, right? It's like, oh, can I start from base one? Like, is there any notes in the database? So that's something I think, to be honest with you, Matt, so many decision makers on the side that I represent and talk to are looking for that support too. You know, I mean, there's so many companies out there that does stuff. And I love how you guys said, man, you keep it real. That human connection is still with the tech side too. Yeah. No, that's huge. And that's something that we never want to lose. So pricing and stuff like that, we're not going to get in really into pricing, but um, is there anything going on now since you guys have been around for three years that you're really throwing out there so uh, people can jump aboard on this? So like I mentioned, we've been around for about three years. That first year and a half or so was really all R&D. Um, we were mm -hmm. analyzing um, three, 400,000 different, uh, different interviews through our machine learning to really make things honed in. Uh, again, we're not just uh, an auto recording. There's a, there's other things out there uh, that allow you to do note taking for Zoom calls and stuff, and and that's great. And those are cool uh, little plugins yeah. and such. Um, but we're we're really focused again on the the interview itself, the screen. Um, and from that, from after all the the R and D we had done um, into this last year, we're just making sure that we're we're showing people what it is that we're capable of. Um, we've already made more improvements. Uh, since I think the first time I talked to you, we rolled out a new chatbot feature that we're excited about. Oh, nice. um, we're in this Q1, we're actually adding about a dozen different languages that we'll be able to work with. So you're talking about like, you know, all of EU, we're talking about different areas within South America, even looking around APAC. So we're just making sure that we're as accessible as possible. Um, pricing right now is, is very reasonable for what it is. And, and candidly, we're probably a little bit uh, undervalued on the pricing itself. Um, pricing, I'm sure, will get readjusted as we kind of creep into the end of uh, end of Q1 there. So we want to make sure that people can get in now um, before anything starts uh, starts you know leveling out to what it is that we're capable of. Um, we don't want to undervalue ourselves or, or anything like that. Um, but at the same time, we do want people to make sure that they can get their foot in the door before this truly uh, takes off even more. Um, working with you know, like I mentioned, Dexian and Bullhorn and some of these different name brands, it, it's allowed us to get a lot of exposure from top 40 teams. Um, and we're excited about that. At the same time, we have the onesie twosies, we have the people, the mom and pop shops, and, and we don't want to lose those. Um, and so we're really just looking to continue our growth. Um, and uh, right now, we, we don't want pricing to get in the way of things, but we want to be conscious of what it is that we offer and allow people to, to get in now before you know, we really uh, kind of reassess to the market and make sure that you know, we're, we're appropriately priced out um, in, a, in, a, in a good, healthy way. And you know this. I mean, I've been around this game a lot. When it's a, you know, only three years in, you're going to get a good pricing compared to five years from now if it's you guys are blowing up, which you will. You know what I mean? So get in while it's still on that entry level. <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, it, it it doesn't hurt to get in now. Like you, like you just mentioned, a lot of the, the larger name brands, whether it's ATSs that are hiking things up 9% no. every oh. year or other vendors that actually did more or job boards that change different plans around. We just want to make sure that people know what they're getting into. Um, and yeah, getting in early never hurts and, and uh, to lock in some good healthy pricing. But regardless, we're going to make sure we're good for, for people um, whenever they come on board. 
Love it, love it. So sectors, is there any certain sectors? I mean, are you taking every, I mean, from healthcare to light industrial, is there any ones that's your specialty in? So we we have uh, we have people that do everything from uh, truck drivers and LI shops through, you know, real heavy, dense IT with all sorts of different skills and, and such. Um, anything that really, I think, has a lot of skills notated throughout those conversations uh, makes things just a little bit cleaner on our end. Uh, that said, even if you are, you know, uh, placing the more of like day pay, day laborers and such, we can mm -hmm. still handle it, um, especially when you're considering the volume and the productivity that's going to happen just from that many conversations. Um, there's a lot to be said there. Uh, but when you're thinking about skills, when you're thinking about certifications, when you're thinking about other items there, that's where we're really going to be able to use our logic to pull in information in ways that sometimes can be too complex to um, have a recruiter take down all those notes and get all that information in. And there's a lot to be lost in the mix. We're making sure all that's captured. So I'd say, you know, uh, different sort of staffing that maybe has different skills and there's going to be more to it that way that needs to be uh, captured all at once. Very helpful, but uh, I, I wouldn't say we're exclusive just to IT or just to healthcare or anything of that sort, because also we've excelled heavily with, with high volume, whether it be LI or, you know, trucking or, or anything in between. So well, we all, we all know it, starts with the, it all starts with the interview, my man, you know that, you know, and if, you know, you have a good interview or a bad interview, you know, and you don't have the skills for that, with like a solution like you guys have, I mean, you'd be passing up on a good candidate. You know, I mean, I always treat it like football. It's good players, man. You're losing out on, you know, so. Yeah. When people, when people usually do uh, all these different interviews for a role and maybe they do uh, 10 interviews for one oh. role. And uh, with that, they probably take notes on about half of them um, on, you know, half those different interviews because they are thinking of one role in mind for all those candidates and about half those notes from, you know, the five notes that they take, maybe half them actually end up back into the ATS. So you have two, three different notes on candidates within the ATS, but you talk to 10 people. We're just making sure that when you go back to search that ATS, rather than just finding notes on those two folks, you now can find notes on those 10 folks who could be a silver medalist or a gold medalist for that other role that could hit your plate the next day. So we're just making sure that all of that's captured. You're not missing out on things. Your people are already making calls. It might be you that's making those calls, that's making those interviews. And it's really just kind of wasted breath otherwise, unless all of that's going to be put back into the system, um, regardless of the ATS. So we just want people to make the most of it. There it is, man. You can see it in Matt's voice, man. Hear it in his voice, man. The pump and the energy. So I got to ask before we wrap things up, Matt, um, tell me about the forecast for 2024. Anything that you want to throw out there, AI, that you think is going to uh, jump out for everybody? Any tips? I think... Yeah, I, I think really with this, we're going to continue with the trend of AI. I think people are going to get more um, honed in on the sort of uh, tech, the sort of AI. And again, I know that's a, a large term to be thrown around. Um, people are going to get more honed in on, on what's best for them, whether mm -hmm. that be a, a, a tool that's using conversational AI, whether that's something that's just helping reduce any sort of redundancies or helping avoid an extra step. Um, it's as easy as that. It doesn't have to be somebody revamping, as you mentioned before, their tech stack. It doesn't need to be thumb linking to the tech stack and then turning it upside, upside down and on its head and twisting it around. Um, yeah. It really can just be finding bits and pieces that you can you know, capitalize your time on, make the most of. Uh, if you can save yourself 10%, 20% of your time each day, that's going to be a game changer between you and a competitor. Um, and every agency out there has people that they're running up against. And so if you can be 10% better, 20% better than the person that's behind you, that's a win. And that means more, more recs, more submittals, more jobs, more wins, more placements along the way. Um, and so I think it's really going to be people that are finding what's the best fit for them um, and hopefully finding that out sooner than later. So they're hopefully the first one to be finding out you know, what that means for their company rather than watching one of their competitors find the answer first. So I think it's really just going to be people getting more and more uh, selective over the direction they're going with AI um, rather than just being befuddled by um, the, the term as a whole. Oh, 100 percent. I think voice AI, I'm a big fan of that. I think voice AI in 2024 is going to be incredible. How it can scrub your database and other things like that. I think that's I mean, no human can do that. What it can tap into 8000 people in your database, man, it can scrub it down to 200 live people. You know, that's amazing. 
now. So uh, I got to ask yeah. you real quick here. I forgot about this, but we got to ask us, is there a contract per year? Just want to throw that out there for some of the uh, viewers here, or is it play you, every month you pay, or is it a, a, like a year contract? What's, what's the deal? So for enterprise customers, it is going to be an annual contract. Um, that's the way that we work. And for when I say enterprise, I mean, usually you're looking at things like an ATS integration, um, more mm -hmm. enterprise support. Um, those are going to be for true teams that are coming on rather than like a one Z or a two Z. And I don't mean that in any sort of negative light, but that allows us to be able to just spend more time and, and more, um, you know, hand holding with people that are coming on for a, a, a bigger picture. Uh, most people that are coming on now, like you had mentioned, um, are, are signing for two years, three years, just to make sure they get everything locked in now. Um, but as far as, uh, as far as the agreements go, um, you know, we're, we're happy to work with teams that are smaller, that are kind of like getting things up and off the ground. We do have a Chrome extension that people can poke around with. Um, but at the same time for teams, we do allow them to do things like we have a pilot period for enterprise customers just to make sure it works, um, yeah. that it's not just them taking a, a word for it, but they're able to try it. They're able to make sure that it fits within their workflow. We're producing the results that they want. Um, before, you know, really getting in and, and fully engaging. So uh, enterprise customers are going to be an uh, annualized contract. And most people at this point are usually signing it for two years um, just to make sure that, that they have everything that they need. And like we had mentioned um, with pricing, I'm sure getting readjusted just with the market the way it is. Um, it's, uh, it, it doesn't hurt to get in early. <laughs> there it is, man. Christmas gifts right here in early. Yep. So hey, Matt, where can people reach you at, man? Um, people are going to be really able to reach me on uh, LinkedIn. I'll also put something in the comments below um, here. I'll make sure that's nice and easily tagged um, to be able to book a time with me, um, to book a time with our team, to be able to find us on LinkedIn, our website, and everything in between, um, as well as I think I'll be putting a, a, a an Instagram in here as well for people to be able to track me also. So wins all around, and uh, yeah, we'll make sure that we're, we're nice and accessible for everyone. Dude, I love it. And you know what? Tell everybody out there, Matt, you're not taking any time off during the holidays. You can still do demos, right? All the way up to the end of the year. Hey, if it happens, it happens. I'm going to make sure that uh, uh, holidays or not, I'll, I'll, I'm happy to be everybody's Santa Claus. I'm growing the beard out. I'll even dye it white. Dude, um, he and, is. Uh, ho, ho, <laughs> ho, the higher logic. <laughs> I've never had one of these. I'm excited to do it. I'm seeing what happens. And uh, it was Shit, a no-shave November. And it's uh, it's riding through the holidays. So. Um, we'll, we'll see what this looks like. One, one might be uh, just a baby face, but uh, it, it needs to happen. You can follow along too. I'm sure yours is the same color. Dude, uh, I can't grow a beard, man. I can grow like a little uh, chin here and it's all gray, man. So I'm, I'm staying off that, man. It's, it's, it's shaving every week. <laughs> Look like a wild man in the woods. Before we go, I want to reach out and give a shout out to the sponsors here. So we got Advanced Partners, definitely. They are the number one funding source for staffing firms in the country. They put the fun in funding. If you need funding, you know who to call. Advanced Partners. They're my peeps. All right, brother. Well, hey, thank you so much for coming on, man. It's been a pleasure, man. You know, we're definitely got some good projects coming up in uh, 2024. We won't tell anybody about yet. Just keep them, you know, a little in suspense. But uh, hey, Matt, Wonder always rest. a pleasure, brother. Always a pleasure. If you guys get a chance, you got to check out Higher Logic. You know, I'll send all the info over to anybody out there who's interested. And give Matt a call. Just bullshit with it, man. It'll be fun. Hey, make it nice and easy. Well, Richard, Shark, appreciate it. Love being on the show. Um, and uh, yeah, nobody be a stranger, yourself included. Um, give uh, give me or Richard a, sh a shout and, and we'll make sure that some magic can happen either which way. That's it, everybody. Hey, that's a wrap. Till next time, be kind to everybody. Take care.